Hello, I'm Cheryl, and this is Sleep Tight Relax, a calming bedtime podcast for the young and young at heart. Our sleep story is the third chapter of the story Alice in Wonderland. The group are out of the water now and trying to decide how to get dry. Everyone has an idea, but finally the mouse, who is the oldest, tells everyone what they need to do. The mouse's idea doesn't work, so the dodo steps up. Let's see what happens. Before we continue with our story, Let's turn down the lights, get cozy in your bed, close your eyes, and feel warm and secure. Now that we have done that, let's use our imagination a little bit. While we are breathing, let's imagine that you are blowing up a balloon every time you exhale. You can make this balloon as big as you'd like and give it whatever color you want. It could be rainbow colored or have animal prints all over it. I would like you to take a great big breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth, blowing up your imaginary balloon. This is no ordinary balloon. It's a balloon you can ride in. Once you get it as big as you want, it detaches from your mouth and it drifts slowly up into the sky, taking you with it. There is a strong breeze right now and your balloon drifts over the trees. You can see your home, and the street you live on. Slowly but surely, your balloon takes off and you can land it anywhere you like. Land it in your favorite place. This could be your bedroom or the couch at a friend's house, or maybe it's a place to buy ice cream. Let's stay here for a few moments. And then when you are ready, take a few more deep breaths, each time exhaling into the balloon. And it slowly takes you again for another ride. Perhaps it can take you right into our story, Alice in Wonderland. Or right back into your bed again. Great. Let's continue with Chapter 3 of Alice in Wonderland. A Caucus Race and a Long Tail They were indeed a strange-looking party that gathered on the bank. The birds with draggled feathers the animals with their fur clinging close to them, and all dripping wet, cross, and uncomfortable. The first question, of course, was how to get dry again. They had a meeting about this, and after a few minutes, it seemed quite natural to Alice to find herself talking naturally with them, as if she had known them all her life. Indeed, she had quite a long argument with the lorry, who at last turned sulky and would only say, I am older than you and must know better. And this Alice would not allow without knowing how old it was. And, as the lorry positively refused to tell its age, there was no more to be said. At last, the mouse, who seemed to be a person of authority among them, called out, Sit down, all of you, and listen to me. I will soon make you dry enough. 
They all sat down at once in a large ring with the mouse in the middle. Alice kept her eyes anxiously fixed on it, for she felt sure she would catch a bad cold if she did not get dry very soon. Ahem, <clears throat> said the mouse with an important air. Are you all ready? This is the driest thing I know. Silence all around, if you please. William the Conqueror, whose cause was favored by the Pope, was soon submitted to by the English, who wanted leaders and had been of late much accustomed to unsurpassion and conquest. Edwin and Morcar, the earls of America and Northumbria, ugh, said the lorry with a shiver. I beg your pardon, said the mouse frowning, but very politely. Did you speak? Oh, not I, said the lorry quickly. I thought you did, said the mouse. I proceed. Edwin and Morcar, the earls of Mauritia and Northumbria, declared for him, and even Stigand, the Patriarch Archbishop of Canterbury, found it advisable. Found what? said the duck. Found it, the mouse replied rather crossly. Of course you know what it means. I know what it means well enough. When I find a thing, said the duck, it's generally a frog or a worm. The question is, what did the Archbishop find? The mouse did not notice this question, but quickly went on. Found it advisable to go with Edgar Atheling to meet William and offer him the crown. William's conduct at first was moderate, but the insolence of his Normans. How are you getting on now, my dear? It continued, turning to Alice as it spoke. As wet as ever, said Alice in a sad tone. It doesn't seem to dry me at all. In that case, said the dodo seriously, rising to its feet, I move that the meeting adjourn for the immediate adoption of more energetic remedies. Speak English, said the eaglet. I don't know the meaning of half of those long words, and, what's more, I don't believe you do either. And the eaglet bent down its head to hide a smile. Some of the other birds giggled. What I was going to say, said the dodo in an offended tone, was that the best thing to get us dry would be a caucus race. What is a caucus race? asked Alice. Not that she wanted much to know, but the dodo had paused as if it thought that somebody ought to speak, and no one else seemed inclined to say anything. Why, said the dodo, the best way to explain it is to do it. And as you might like to try the thing yourself some winter day, I will tell you how the dodo managed it. First, it marked out a race course in a sort of circle. The exact shape doesn't matter, it said. And then all the parties were placed along the course, here and there. There was no one, two, three, and away, but they began running when they liked and stopped when they liked so that it was not easy to know when the race was over. However, when they had been running half an hour or so and were quite dry again, the dodo suddenly called out, the race is over, and they all crowded around it, panting and asking, but who won? This question the dodo could not answer without a great deal of thought and it sat for a long time with one finger pressed upon its forehead, the position in which you usually see Shakespeare in the pictures of him, while the rest waited in silence. At last, the dodo said, everybody has won and all must have prizes. But who is to give the prizes? Quite a chorus of voices asked. Why, she, of course, said the dodo, pointing to Alice with one finger. And the whole party at once crowded around her, calling out in confused ways, prizes, prizes. 
Alice had no idea what to do. And in despair, she put her hand in her pocket and pulled out a box of candy. Luckily, the salt water had not gotten into it and handed them round as prizes. There was exactly one piece for each. But she must have a prize herself, you know, said the mouse. Of course, the dodo replied very seriously. What else have you got in your pocket? He went on, turning to Alice. Only a thimble, said Alice sadly. Hand it over here, said the dodo. Then they all crowded around her once more, while the dodo solemnly presented the thimble, saying, We beg your acceptance of this elegant thimble. And when it had finished this short speech, they all cheered. Alice thought the whole thing very absurd, but they all looked so serious that she did not dare to laugh. And as she could not think of anything to say, she simply bowed and took the thimble, looking as serious as she could. The next thing was to eat the candies. This caused some noise and confusion as the large birds complained that they could not taste theirs and the small ones choked and had to be patted on the back. However, it was over at last and they sat down again in a circle and begged the mouse to tell them something more. You promised to tell me your history, you know, said Alice. And why is it you dislike C and D? She added in a whisper, half afraid that it would be offended again. Mine is a long and a sad tale, said the mouse, turning to Alice and sighing. It is a long tale, certainly, said Alice, looking down with wonder at the mouse's tail. But why do you call it sad? And she kept on puzzling about it while the mouse was speaking, so that her idea of the tale was something like this. Fury said to a mouse that he met in the house, Let us both go to law. I will prosecute you. Come, I'll take no denial. We must have a trial. For really this morning I've nothing to do. Said the mouse to the cur, such a trial, dear sir, with no judge or jury, would be wasting our breath. I'll be judge, I'll be jury, said cunning old Fury. I'll try the whole cause and send you to jail. You are not listening, said the mouse to Alice severely. What are you thinking of? Oh, I beg your pardon, said Alice very humbly. You had gotten to the fifth bend, I think. I had not, cried the mouse sharply and very angrily. A knot, said Alice, always ready to make herself useful and looking anxiously about her. Oh, do let me help to undo it. I shall do nothing of the sort, said the mouse, getting up and walking away. You insult me by talking such nonsense. I didn't mean it pleaded poor Alice, but you're so easily offended, you know. The mouse only growled in reply. Please, come back and finish your story, Alice called after it, and the others all joined in chorus. Yes, please do. But the mouse only shook its head impatiently and walked a little quicker. What a pity it wouldn't stay, sighed the lorry, as soon as it was quite out of sight and an old crab took the opportunity of saying to her daughter, Ah, my dear, let this be a lesson to you, never to lose your temper. Hold your tongue, ma, said the little crab a little snappish. You're enough to try the patience of an oyster. I wish I had our Dinah here, I do, said Alice aloud, addressing no one in particular. She'd soon fetch it back. And who is Dinah, if I might venture to ask the question, asked the lorry. Alice replied eagerly, for she was always ready to talk about her pet. Dinah's our cat, and she's such a great one for catching mice, you can't think. And oh, I wish you could see her after the birds. Why, she will catch a bird so quickly. 
This speech caused a remarkable sensation among the party. Some of the birds hurried off at once. One old magpie began wrapping itself up very carefully, remarking, I really must be getting home. The night air doesn't suit my throat. And a canary called out in a trembling voice to its children, Come away, my dears. It's high time you were all in bed. On various pretexts, they all moved off and Alice was soon left alone. I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah, she said to herself in a sad tone. Nobody seems to like her down here, and I'm sure she's the best cat in the world. Oh, my dear Dinah, I wonder if I shall ever see you any more. And here poor Alice began to cry again for she felt very lonely and low-spirited. In a little while, however, she heard again a little pattering of footsteps in the distance, and she looked up eagerly, half hoping that the mouse had changed his mind and was coming back to finish his story. And that's the end of this chapter. Good night. <laughs>